Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. Uh, and we have talked about the general uh, procedure, uh, procedurally steps of the failure analysis. And uh, we know that failure analysis is carried out to identify the primary causes of the failure so that we can take the suitable corrective action in order to avoid the recurrence of the similar kind of failure. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, we have listed in like 13 steps related with the general steps of the failure analysis. So, one by one we will be talking about uh, Mm, the, the relevance of the each step in detail and what should be done under the each step. Uh, we know that in the failure analysis, uh, basically uh, it is about the procedure, tests, characterization, testing, characterization of the failed component fail components so that basically all these things are done so that uh, we can have some primary causes of uh, failure. Uh, we have seen that there are about 13, 14 number of the steps for related with the failure analysis uh, as a general procedure. Uh, for a specific component failure analysis of a specific component or a specific failure, uh, the general steps need to be uh, uh, customized as per the requirement uh, so that uh, the, the possible uh, primary causes of the failure can be identified. But in any case, we need to follow the first step which is about the collection of the background information, background information uh, about the product. So, basically here we will have to start with the, the name of the product or the system which has failed and for which the failure analysis is to be carried out. Apart from the name, other information like the department or the section where it was located. Thereafter, uh, the, the technical information as far as the familiarization with the failed component is concerned, we need to collect the information about certain heads uh, and this includes like information about the design aspects. So, we need to collect them all about the, um, uh, the detailed drawings of the uh, product, so that we have idea about the what are the dimensions which are expected, what kind of the load for which it has been designed and uh, uh, let me say that the, the loading conditions for which it has been designed may be the material which has to be used for making that particular component and what standards need to be followed uh, uh, should have been followed for making that particular product. So, detailed drawing of the product with the standards and specifications, specifications is obtained. This is the first thing. Thereafter, we need to collect also information about the manufacturing, how the product was manufactured. Uh, so, under this we need to talk about the processes, uh, the process condition means the process parameters which have been used for manufacturing the uh, product and uh, then the, uh, the procedure of procedural steps which have been used, procedural steps of manufacturing. Uh, for example, it can be like uh, uh, the, the, if the something was made by the casting, then uh, sand mold, uh, then uh, like say the melting temperature, uh, then the fluxing, degassing, and then filtering, pouring, the kind of pouring temperature which was used, then putting into the mold. And then uh, uh, we can say uh, the cleaning of the casting, uh, post casting heat treatment. So, all these steps need to be mentioned, need to be obtained so that we know uh, right from the beginning how uh, it has been made, what steps were followed, and whether the component which has failed has uh, the, the uh, mechanical 
or thermal history according to the manufacturing or not. Thermal history means uh, the, the product will show if it has been processed through mechanical approaches or the thermal approaches like casting and welding. So, that, that thermal history will be present with the product and uh, this is what can be obtained through the detailed characterization of the uh, product also which will suggest if it has been made by the casting or subjected to the post weld treatment which was right or not. So, it is important that complete detailed information about the manufacturing process uh, and the procedural steps is obtained and uh, thereafter we have uh, the service conditions service conditions. Uh, so, there are number of things which are to be obtained under the service conditions. After the service conditions, we have uh, uh, the like uh, the photography of the failed component and thereafter selection of sample. Then exploring the possibility of the abnormal conditions, abnormal conditions uh, which can be experienced by the component during the service and then there is wreckage analysis, wreckage analysis which involves the what are the different pro components uh, which were obtained uh, after the failure of the product. So, these are the different things which uh, need uh, different points information about which need to be obtained under the background information collection. So, that we know actually what it is and uh, what are the different uh, uh, what is the general history of the product and what conditions it has worked. So, as I have said as far as the first point is concerned design we need to get information through the detailed drawings regarding the dimensions, the loading for which it has been designed, the material of which component should have been made, its specific, its specification and the standards according to which it should have been made. So, this information is collected and in light of that subsequent uh, uh, characterizations will help us to know whether the dimensions are proper or not, material is proper or not or um, uh, uh, it has uh, the correct kind of composition or not. So, it follows the uh, particular kind of a standard as per the specification or not. So, all that is obtained. Thereafter, the information about the manufacturing processes. You we know that for making any particular product, uh, a very large range of the processes need to be applied so that uh, it, it becomes workable. Uh, say for uh, like uh, if we take up any product, then it will be processed through the number of uh, 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 number of the steps. So, since the manufacturing processes uh, uh, will be involving the number of steps, so the different steps need to be clubbed together to see um, uh, to see uh, that in which way it uh, could be affected by one approach or the another approach. So entire range of the manufacturing processes are grouped under the three headings. One is mechanical manufacturing processes, thermal processing of the component and the chemical processing of the component. Say the component initially from the uh, big uh, th thick plates it has been rolled down to the uh, thin sections, rolling uh, uh, like say forging bending all these are the mechanical processes stretching or stretch forming uh, all these are the mechanical processes where load is applied machining uh, mechanical forces are applied so that the control removal of the material can take place. So, whenever the mechanical methods are applied they will leave their traces in form of the deformation and plastic deformation the magnitude may vary, but the deformation will be there and the accordingly it will be leaving behind some unique kind of the structure in the deformed component. Then uh, we will have we have to see if the component has, has been also processed through the thermal uh, uh, based processes. So, under this we have like use of the uh, 
uh, heat for the fusion in welding processes, uh, for shouldering, uh, for brazing or for the heat treatment purpose for improving the properties of the component if the component has been subjected to the heat treatment. So, if these has been uh, uh, used in course of the manufacturing then they will be leaving behind their own traces, their own effect. For example, if the component was subjected to the hardened and thereafter it should have been quenched uh, sorry uh, after hardening it should have been tempered, but if the tempering has been skipped in advertently or by mistake then uh, we need to see really the component will have the poor toughness. So, uh, this may be identified as one of the uh, possible cause like uh, if the after uh, after hardening quenching was missed then this has led to the improper toughness and that under the impact conditions had failed. Uh, similarly, uh, the, so unless we know what are the different processes for which component has been subjected, uh, we really cannot uh, identify the possible cause of the failure. So, that is why complete uh, details about the manufacturing steps is also uh, required under the chemical uh, category of the processes like chemical cleaning was applied chemical cleaning or electroplating was applied or uh, like say some uh, controlled alloying was done, controlled alloying like say through the diffusion based processes uh, like nitriding, carburizing, carbonitriding, etcetera. So, in all these cases the chemical modification has been applied. So, these will be altering the the chemical composition which will alter the microstructure and the mechanical properties of the product and these can contribute uh, uh, towards the failure if they have not been implemented or they are their implementation uh, has been improper. So, uh, according to the manufacturing process which have been applied uh, uh, we need to see really the material is having the traces or the features of those manufacturing processes or not or if any step has been incorrectly applied then that also can be established through the subsequent characterization. Uh, we also need to have the not just information about the process or procedural steps which have been used but also need to know the process parameters. Say uh, the, if the heat treatment should have been done like uh, 7. Uh, like say uh, austenitizing at 800 degree centigrade followed by quenching at 24 degree centigrade and then tempering at like say 300 degree centigrade. So, we need to have the information about this according to these steps and the conditions and the, the material will have un, uh, a particular kind of the structure and properties. If invariantly it is being subjected to the 400 or 200 degree centigrade then it will have the product will have altogether different kind of the structure and properties and which may lead to uh, which may increase or which may discourage the fracture. So, we need to see uh, that we have the detailed information about the process parameters which were used for the manufacturing purpose. Apart from that service conditions for which component has been exposed is also important. So, service conditions, so what will be the service conditions? Uh, like each uh, critical component the history of service of each com critical component is usually maintained in all big industries because they will be governing, uh, the, they will be affecting the continuity of the service. So, if it is so that um, that we uh, that the proper service record of a particular uh, component which has failed is maintained then it makes the job of the failure analyst very easier in the sense that it he will be able to have the idea about the kind of service conditions for which it has been exposed and these may be in terms of the load load whether there has been the only the possibility of the normal load there is a possibility of the abnormal loading or there is a possibility for the uh, sudden accidental loading and uh, the load is the fatigue kind or it is a static uh, or there is a possibility of the impact loading. So, 
according to the kind of uh, the load which can be there whether the material uh, of the component is having the requisite properties or not that is what can be checked through the subsequent uh, analysis. So, this is one the loading type uh, then the service environment. Service environment means it, it has the like it if it is ambient conditions normal atmosphere or it is the low temperature or the high temperature conditions or it is like some corrosive environment exposure under the corrosive environment, it is under the corrosion fatigue, the fluctuating load under the corrosive environment or there is a combination of the corrosion and erosion there can be variety of the conditions. Uh, like uh, the, the components which are used in the, uh, the sea, they are subjected to both corrosion and erosion, uh, like number of components which are used uh, in the hydropower plants, they are subjected to the erosion and the cavitation. Uh, so, depending upon the kind of the product which is uh, being considered, uh, there can be different. Apart from this, uh, not just the temperature values, the temperature gradient uh, which uh, can which is uh, uh, for which the component is being exposed also need to be considered. So, if uh, these details are available, we can uh, anticipate the behavior of the uh, component under the service conditions, whether a given product should fail in a uh, under these conditions or not. And if it is failing, then it will have its own effect on the fracture surfaces, which uh, subsequently uh, which through subsequent analysis can be identified if really the fracture has been caused due to the deficiency in the material or improper service conditions. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, of course, if uh, the, the re history of the service record is not available, then the job of the failure analyst becomes difficult in the sense that he will have to deduce the information based on the service conditions. And uh, that also will depend upon the experience of the failure analyst, if uh, the incorrect uh, um, estimation of the service conditions uh, is, uh, is done, then that can be completely misleading. So, we need to be very careful when information is deduced based on the uh, information about the service conditions. So, uh, next step is the photography. Like uh, if the failure has taken place, we need to take the proper photographs of the, the of the the scene where the failure has taken place, so that uh, so that proper record can be maintained. What was the scene immediately after the failure? Something which uh, appears uh, is to be the casual and the normal one. Subsequent analysis may indicate that there has been tampering and there has been. Uh, um, intentionally the things have been manipulated to cause the failure. So, there can be legal implications. So, to deal with those aspects, it is important that proper record of the photographs of the failed component is obtained. So, that uh, uh, and this, uh, this of course, should be representative representative of the situation. Of course, we need to take the photograph in such a way that it helps to show us the situation immediately after the failure in order to, uh, to also indicate the possibility. So, this will help that if the subsequent analysis indicates that there has been some tampering or intentionally something wrong has been done with the product then that can have the legal implications and uh, to deal with those things it is important that the proper photographic record of the, uh, the failed component is maintained. Another thing is about the selection of sample. Like uh, in the in the site of the failure, where, where wherever failure has taken place, it the 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 scene may be very bad. Like uh, the blast in the boilers take place, so in the accident site, the situation may be very bad, wherein lot of uh, the damaged machines and the people would have died. So in that situation, it's important that um, we need to see where from uh, the samples can be 
collected in order to uh, for, uh, in order to go through for the future or the further analysis so uh, this of course like uh, the photographic record uh, the whatever the samples samples are there they should be representative of the uh, the failure of component so of course these are these need to be taken from the near fracture fracture surface basically fracture surfaces are near fracture surfaces uh, this is one thing sometimes it is important that sample is also collected from some other location like um, in a tube in a boiler if the bursting of the tube has taken place from this location then of course we need to collect the sample from this location where our fracture has taken place but at the same time we also need to collect the uh, sample from some other location where really the failure has not occurred so this uh, kind of the sample collection actually helps us to see really if uh, this particular location has experienced a unique kind of the service conditions as compared to the other location where failure has not taken place or the failure it has occurred due to the manufacturing problem say for example in the boiler tubes normally failure occurs due to the overheating so the one location which has been overheated will be experiencing the coarsening of the grain and spheroidization of the spheroidization of the steel so spheroidization and coarsening both will be leading to the softening of the steel and which under the pressure can lead to the bursting so uh, to establish this if this is uh, if uh, this particular location uh, has failed due to the overheating or improper heat treatment uh, then for that we need to see the, the that the structure of this location is compared with the other location where failure has not taken place so we'll be taking this location from other sample also and if it shows that the structure is normal no spheroidization then it will suggest that uh, this particular location has been subjected to the over uh, heating and because of that only the coarsening and spheroidization has taken place and which has caused the failure but if uh, if uh, this uh, location also shows that this location is also having the spheroidized structure very coarse grains then it is indicating that this is having the faulty heat treatment instead of the normalizing it has been given prolonged normalizing which has led to the coarsening of the grain structure so the improper heat treatment would be the cause uh, of the failure instead of the overheating so this kind of thing can be established only through the uh, proper systematic uh, analysis of the failed sample and comparing it with the new one or something uh, or the uh, structure of some other location which has not uh, failed uh, so uh, comparison with other location so we need to collect the sample for that purpose uh, in addition to this uh, we also need to see uh, that uh, there whatever if if there is some like uh, impurities or um, corrosion products corrosion products chemicals if these are present on the surface all these need to be collected so that these can be used as an evidence to see if the failure has been contributed by the formation of such kind of the products on to the fracture surface formation of the irregularities and impurities on the surface which have triggered the the failure so samples we need to collect uh, considering the various suspects like uh, the sample is represented to the failure of the component sample for comparison purpose or the co products uh, or the components which have failed by the corrosion or the Mm, or, or the uh, or the related factors then accordingly we need to see whatever products and the things are present on the surface that is collected properly like say if uh, the, if a particular gear 
in an engine has failed due to the uh, lack of the lubrication, then that also need to be collected to see right like if there is a black oxide debris is present on the surface instead of the lubricant that will be suggestive of the absence of the lubricant. So, the black debris needs to be is to be collected so that it can support the finding that uh, the lubricant was not there and rather the wear of the gear teeth surfaces have taken place. Uh, due to the direct metal to metal contact wear which has led to the production of the, the, uh, the black oxide powder uh, on the fra on the wear surface of the gear teeth. So, whatever is present on the fracture surface has to be collected properly so that it can be analyzed subsequently for the analysis purpose. The possibility of the abnormal load conditions. So, possibility of the abnormal load conditions like there is a possibility of the accidental load if uh, the accidentally some additional load can come onto the surface uh, there is a possibility of the impact load and, and there is a possi possibility of the uh, if uh, abnormal thing like recent recent uh, repair or overhauling was carried out. Sometimes in, in, inappropriate overhauling and repair can also lead to the ex sudden failure of the, the system. Uh, 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 and then uh, uh, there is like uh, uh, improper exposure to the service conditions which were not expected or intended. So, uh, like suddenly it has been exposed to the uh, corrosive conditions, suddenly it has been exposed to the very low temperature and in normally the, if the component is expected to work under the ambient condition, but suddenly if it is exposed to the minus 20 and minus 30 degree centigrade, then it may not perform as intended. Uh, and so, these are the some abnormal conditions which can happen with the product, these abnormal exposure to the service conditions may be in terms of temperature, corrosion or some kind of chemical in which component may not behave as expected. So, a uh, list uh, of such kind of uh, the possibilities with regard to the abnormal service conditions uh, should be identified so that uh, their possible contribution on the failure of the component can be explored and uh, investigated. Then the wreckage analysis is the another step related with the preliminary uh, sorry background collection information. A collection of the background information. So, wreckage analysis there are three important aspects related wreckage the analysis. The, the number one is to find the position of the different fractured component. This helps us to see the intensity under which the intensity of the load or uh, the failure uh, which has led to the, uh, the scattering of the different parts over a small area or over a large area. Like we must have uh, seen that uh, uh, the intensity of the blast is uh, checked through the uh, through the distance up to which the uh, the broken pieces um, were found away from the site of the blast or the distance up to which the, uh, the glass windows were broken away from the site of the uh, uh, site of the blast. Like say if this is the site of the blast, so the, the effect is there up to this zone or it is up to this zone. So, that will be indicating the intensity of the, the blast. So, similar situation is here position of the different fractured component where what was found immediately after the accident and then there is about the schematic or photographing of the different parts on accident site. Uh, it is possible that uh, a, in one photograph each and everything may not be covered. So, what will happen if the accident site is so large then we need to use the schematics like if this is the area of uh, affected by the accident or the by the failure, so and this is the actual site of the accident. So, in one photograph it may not be possible to cover the entire area. 
So, in that case uh, we need to make the schematic and schematic of location 1, location 2, location 3 and sequentially we need to take the photograph to show what is there at what location with regard to the distance and, uh, and each can be leveled with and uh, then accordingly we can take the photograph of each of the location to show where what was present and this can be marked. So, it can be on the scale or without a scale just to show that what was the area affected and where what was found with regard to the different uh, uh, parts of the fractured component. Then there is inventory, inventory of the field component. Uh, this uh, is very important aspect because we need to see uh, really uh, uh, like if a, if a product has 10 parts. Uh, so, after the uh, after the uh, failure all those different parts need to be collected and they need to be assembled to see really after uh, after the fracture after the failure how many parts were found and if we find that after the failure uh, only 8 were present and 2 are missing 2 parts are missing then this will suggest that some manipulation has been done some intentionally um, uh, something wrong has been done with the product because the two things are missing and uh, while well, eight are present. So, uh, this can be established only if uh, the proper inventory of the uh, fracture site uh, the failed component is is maintained. Uh, like normally we see that in the railway uh, uh, train accidents people try to find that whether the rail was uh, there. Uh, throughout the length or not in the uh, accident site, uh, different fish plates were present or not and if it is found that fish plates were missing then that can be attributed as one of the possible cause that something tampering some kind of tampering has been done because of which fish plates are missing or the, the, the rail was cut over a particular length that is why absence of uh, rail has led to the, uh, the accident of the train. So, those kind of things can be established only through the subsequent uh, um, analysis or uh, subsequent uh, collection of the, the different field parts and through the inventory. So, the inventory is an important part because it helps to identify what was actually left after the, what was uh, found after the accident. Now, I will summarize uh, this presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about what are the different uh, the points under which information we need to collect so that we are familiar with the, the component which has failed and based on this uh, uh, we can try to make the possible sequence of events of the failure uh, so that um, uh, we can really devise the procedural steps which should be followed in the failure analysis. Thank you for your attention.